The new message gives us a very great teaching about the changing world itself, the greater environment in which we all live, the world we depend upon every day in countless ways. It's giving us a picture of this change, what it means, why it's happening, and where it's taking us or could take us, and the choices that we have yet to make and could make to real, make a real difference in the outcome. So the world begins to teach us some key things that I'd like to talk with you about today. The first is the environment itself. I think the environment is always treated as the background for everything else that we do as human beings, our culture, our politics, our economics. And we just assume that the environment will always be there to support us and provide everything we need to create all the things we want and need. But the environment in the new message is called the most important thing in the world. For if it changes, or if it declines, it changes everything. When I talk about the environment, I'm talking about our climate, the air we breathe, our soils, our water, our food, our resources, our forests, and even the diseases and the pestilence that threatens us. And all the advent of violent weather we're facing today, droughts, super fires, floods, on an almost continuous scale. This is the environment. And the environment is now tapping us on the shoulder and saying, hello, I'm here. And we have to be here for that environment. This is not a political movement or a social movement. This is a changing world reality. If you change the environment, it changes everything. Every aspect of our life, all the things that we depend upon for our basic ability to live here, uh, all the things that civilization requires to function and have stability and perpetuity. Our food, our water, our air, our energy, our opportunity, Progress all depends on the stability of that environment. And the new message talks about freedom, practical freedom, political freedom. This freedom is only possible in a stable environment. A stable environment that has the assurance of continual supply and support. On that platform, real individual freedom can be adopted and sustained. But if the environment becomes too unstable or begins to decline, then surely that freedom will be lost. And now things will have to be directed and mandated for us, not by us. So when you think of freedom, your freedom, your personal freedom, think about the environment that supports you and everyone. Political scenarios change, political leaders change, political drama changes, and all that can be very consuming, but it's really the environment that matters. And even war, the New Message described war as always a competition for resources, despite whatever political or religious aspirations or issues are at stake. It's always an attempt to gain more resources or to compete for resources, or to gain someone else's resources. Resources, environment. In a new world reality, this is what really matters. Political theory, economic theory, it's all based on the stability of the environment and resources. It's the ground we stand upon, it's the air we breathe, it's our ability to function in every moment of life. If this environment becomes too destabilized, we're now facing a specter of war, the likes of which we have rarely seen in modern times at all, what the new message calls the wars of desperation, where nations are so depleted they have to assault, attack, and displace the populations of nations around them that have the resources that they need. That's no longer trade, commerce, and agreement. It now becomes 
a desperate attempt at competition. You certainly want to avoid that. So humanity has changed the environment, the climate, which changes the environment. And it's changing the environment even at this moment in ways that we will not be able to control. We may have already passed the threshold of stabilizing the climate. I think we have. So here we are living in this momentous time of change at the most fundamental level. And yet, how many people see this and feel this and know this? It brings up this dilemma that the new message proposes, which is the problem of change. The problem of change is big change, little reaction. Little change, big reaction. That's the problem with change. People are not engaged with life. They're disconnected from nature. They've forgotten what it takes to survive in this world. They're now indulging in their own personal fantasies, personal realm of speculation, preoccupation, and addiction. Competing with others for resources constantly. So life is producing a great check for us. A great check on everything. If our food declines, war will arise. If water is depleted, human migration will increase dramatically. The message has said the entire Middle East may be unsupportable for human life in 20 or 30 years. In the revelation on the prophet, received in Damascus, Syria in 2009, it said the world will be unrecognizable in 20 years. And here we are, at the beginning of 2022, and things are getting ever more strange and discordant. The new message teaches that we're living in a declining world, a world of declining resources, a growing population, drinking from a slowly shrinking well. This is a pretty frightening picture when you think about it. And it's, it can be earth-shaking for you when you really begin to experience this and feel it. It's not meant to defeat you, but it is meant to wake you up. Wake out of your dream of personal happiness and personal preoccupation to start thinking about how you're going to function in this changing environment. How you're going to live in a new world reality. How you're going to face the great waves of environmental, economic, and social change that are already underway. This is a real turning point for humanity. It's not like things are just going to go on, things will get bumpier, we have a little pandemic we'll have to deal with, we'll get through that, we'll get back to normal. There is no getting back to normal. We're in the middle of a pandemic as, as a great wave of change, which it is, that alone will change the economies, the outlook, and the well-being, and even the lives of many, many people. Far greater it is than people realize or want to think of it. So who can face that? People want to hide behind conspiracy theories or call it a conspiracy or think it's just a passing phase or it's just a giant flu or it's being created, you know, for the profit of certain companies. It's like, People aren't facing reality, people. This is reality. What is reality? Well, I don't know if we can ultimately define that, but my working assumption is reality is everything is happening beyond your thoughts and beliefs. And if you're not paying attention to what's happening beyond your thoughts and your beliefs, then your life will become imperiled by those things that you're not paying attention to. Already the things that I've spoken of are in motion. It's not some future possibility. It's not some dire prediction for the future. The great waves of change are happening now, and they will get greater and greater as we proceed. The new message also teaches us about life in the universe. Why is that important? Because we're emerging into this greater arena of intelligent life. And forces from the greater community are in the world today and intervention, interfering in human affairs for their own purposes. 
All of a sudden now, we are exposed to this greater community of life. It has taken notice of us. It is acting on its own accord. That's a whole other subject that I'll talk about perhaps later in our gathering this weekend. But the universe now becomes a greater context for he the humanity's future. We're no longer isolated in the universe or even with our own world. We're no longer alone in this universe or even within our own world. The recent revelations about craft flying in our skies around military installations has been going on for decades. Now coming out in the public for the first time. As we emerge into this greater community of Tell's life, it is going to change every aspect of our life. It's going to have all religions reevaluating their fundamental principles. It's going to completely change our understanding of the divine power and presence. And the new message is here to support that kind of threshold of realization. It's almost like going to a whole other level of understanding yourself, the world, and the universe around you. But it's all for practical reasons. It's not simply a intellectual journey or a, a journey of speculation and discovery. <laughs> going out and discovering life in the universe is kind of ridiculous. It's here already. And <clears throat> growing numbers of people know this, of course. They may not interpret it correctly, but they know that we are not alone. So the new message through its books on life in the universe, the greater community, these are two important books of the new message, go into great detail about life, functionality, and freedom in the universe, which is actually quite rare. And what it takes to establish and maintain freedom within this greater community of life is something the human family has never really had to deal with or consider. But now it becomes really important. Because who will run this world in the future is now something that's being contested from beyond. Not militarily, but in other more subtle ways. We hit a threshold, probably predictable, inevitable, and it's here now. It's been here for some time. So the new message presents all these things that are so far beyond our normal scope of awareness and consideration and concern. Bigger picture things. So to begin to think about these things and face these things, you really need to be kind of a bigger picture person, not somebody who's only concerned about your job and your relationship and your kids and what you do on a weekend. Now you're thinking about bigger things, bigger forces, bigger movements of life if you're naturally calibrated to this. I'm not talking about it, this being a cultural effect. It's almost like you're born with this greater community need and capacity. And that's why perhaps you're not satisfied with the normal conversations and the, the um, insufficient relationships, the shallow relationships that people establish, the meaningless conversations. You're looking for something bigger. I need something more than this. And that's good. And that's probably why you're here with me today. Because the new message from God is the bigger reality of this world, of the universe, and of you. Why you're in the world today has everything to do with what's happening. When you begin to realize this, you'll stop your endless complaining about the world. or trying to make the world different than it is to see that really you are here to serve this world. And this world holds the key to what you're here to do. It will tell you where you need to be and what you need to do. The needs of the world will call it out of you. The power and the answer is within you. The service is within you, but it has to be called out of you. You cannot call it out of yourself. The new message goes on to talk about the bigger picture of who we are. And that everyone in the world has been sent here for a unique purpose. But due to poverty, political and religious oppression, struggle for resources, most people in the world are not able to go into this deeper realm of their existence and to consider what it really means that they're here for a greater purpose. Perhaps they feel it. So many people feel, yes, I'm here to do something important. 
I don't want to just live a normal kind of life that's mundane and ordinary and predictable. This natural need to connect to the bigger movement and patterns of life now are what bring people to the new revelation. For the religions of antiquity are not here to prepare us for this new world th reality or the great thresholds that humanity is facing even at this moment, increasingly as time goes on. So we're fo faced with a paradigm shift, not just in our understanding, but in the reality of life around us. We've changed the world and now a force change upon us. You can deny this, you can argue with this, you can take issue, you can disagree, but reality is happening no matter what you think or believe or want. So this is all to bring us out of the preoccupation with ourselves, the preoccupation with being in conflict with other people, the dynamics of competition for precedence, political power, social power, economic power, into dealing with a larger arena of life, a greater intelligence of life in our world and beyond our world that is reshaping the planet even as I speak. If you feel that you're a part of this or have a role to play in this bigger reality, then the new message will speak to you very powerfully. And if you're not sure, it will at least give you an idea of the greater movements of change, forces of change, that are operating in the world today. You know, behind the scenes of life even, there are greater movements that are barely discernible. If you were to be on a ship looking down at the waters, you would see the waves and you'd see how the wind is blowing the waves. And sometimes the waves are calm and sometimes they're, they're agitated by the wind. But you would not see the greater movements of water beneath the surface. The greater circulation, planetary circulation, is moving cold and warm water in a conveyor belt all over the world. You would not see those greater movements unless you were to make measurements below the surface and begin to gain a reality on what is occurring there. So right now our lives are being reshaped, recalibrated to a greater set of conditions, practical physical conditions, emotional conditions, social conditions, economic conditions. And if we're not in touch with that, then we're going to be swept along feeling helpless, hopeless, and probably feel like we're, our lives are being dominated, which in a way they are, not just by political forces, but by the movement of life itself. So it's to bring us into this larger arena of life around us and the larger arena of life within us that the new message is here. God would not speak to the world unless humanity was facing a dire set of circumstances for which it cannot prepare itself. That is why the revelations come. And that is why perhaps you have come into the world at this time to be part of this great era of transition, a very difficult, a very troubled era, but an era of great promise for humanity. If we're ever able to become a united race and be free in the universe, we're going to have to go through a tremendous ongoing period of change and recalibration probably at every level of society and every level within us, our psychology, our understanding, how we see ourselves in the world and so forth. So to learn more about this, I recommend two books of the New Message, which you can read free online. The first is The Great Ways of Change and the second is The New World. And these will give you a much bigger picture of the greater f forces of change and movement that are occurring in the world, whether we are ready or not, whether we want them or not, they are there. And it's in our best interests, and it's necessary for us to become engaged with them and to be able to move with these greater forces instead of re resist them or neglect them. This is the promise put before us. If things were hopeless, the new message of God would not have been given. If the end was predictable and unalterable, there would be no new message from God. So there is hope, but the hope is in you. What you will see, know, and do, what will move you in your thinking, how big your vision can become, how much you can feel and know and hear as a participant in this world. 
And that is why knowledge within us is so key and elemental to our ability to transcend those things that limit us and keep us from recognizing and participating in this new world reality.